Hello, welcome to the fifth Miranda Braun Diversity Leadership Annual Lecture, which has been kindly hosted and sponsored by Hogan Lovells. This year is our first virtual and global event, and it is called Black Lives Matter, Drive Change Through Everyday Inclusion. This lecture is open to everyone who would like to learn more about how they can make a difference with racial equity and overall inclusion. We aim to educate, empower and inspire. It is a pleasure to celebrate on the 1st of October 2020, National Inclusion Week and the first day of UK Black History Month and Global Diversity Awareness Month with you. That said, every day should be a celebration of the contributions of black people to society and inclusion in all its form. This year's theme for National Inclusion Week is Each One, Reach One. And I would like to add Teach One to that. It is about individuals and organisations coming together, connecting with someone else, or another organisation to help them understand the opportunity of inclusion and connect. This is exactly what Hogan Lovells and the Miranda Braun Diversity Leadership Foundation have done. First, I will explain the differences between diversity, inclusion, belonging, equity and equality. Then I will discuss where we are with the Black Lives Matter movement for racial equity in and out of the workplace. This will be followed by how each of us can help to move the needle with everyday inclusion from an organisational and individual perspective. So diversity does not just mean women, i.e. gender. It also means people of different ethnic backgrounds, disability, i.e. differently abled people, people of different religious beliefs and faiths, ages, social background, sexual orientation, and so on. It also includes different significant factors that includes personality, education, hobbies, interests, talents, cognitive styles, and abilities. People from different backgrounds, cultures, and experiences come together to strengthen the diverse workforce. Embracing inclusion can lead to more employees feeling a sense of belonging, which is a key requirement in the workplace today. Conversations are now being pushed from talking about diversity to acting upon inclusion and belonging. When I began my career as a teenager, as one of the first and youngest women of colour on the trading floor for a top global investment bank, there was not a structural understanding of why diversity was important. In fact, it was not even a conversation in the industry. Belonging in particular is when your insights and contributions are valued. You feel a sense of belonging and a sense of belonging means that people can bring their true selves and voices to work and not feel like they are a different person there than at home. It is no longer enough to simply include people at the table for diversity. Now in 2020, it is imperative to amplify everyone's voices, clear barriers, create true fairness while appreciating each other for our own unique backgrounds and personalities. What is different today is that the attitudes have changed from let's ignore it and sweep it under the carpet to let's do something about it. To summarise, I like to say that diversity is where everyone is invited to the party. Equity means that everyone gets to contribute to the playlist. Inclusion means that everyone has the opportunity to dance. And my favourite is belonging, which is having your voice heard if you choose to sing to the music. Inclusion and belonging make diversity work. We also need to understand the differences between equality and equity. That is a key thing here. Although both promote fairness, equity means that you're achieving fairness through treating people differently dependent upon need, whereas equality achieves this through treating people exactly the same regardless of need. Equity is also a value that companies need to place more focus on. 
A strong competitive economy is built on making the best of all available talent. Companies which fail to embrace diversity, inclusion and equity risk losing relevance with the modern world and will not survive. I struggle to see why people cannot see that this is about future-proofing your business and growth. Everyone should feel that their individuality, sexual orientation, gender, heritage, disability, age, class and race are celebrated within the workforce and not just tolerated. So where are we right now with the Black Lives Matter movement and the whole racial equity in and out of the workplace? Well, first, let's clarify what we mean when we refer to Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is for the equal and fair treatment of black people. Unfair and unjust treatments towards black people must be stopped. It is not saying that black lives matter more than white lives. It is not anti-white, just like feminism is not anti-men and LGBTQ plus is not anti-straight. It is not a trend or political movement. It is simply saying to treat black people equally in all aspects of life. It is a movement to say that equality and justice are key. This is just about creating an equal society. It is simply a basic human right which must be exercised. Right now, the momentum for Black Lives Matter has gone a little quiet in comparison to the summer of 2020. That said, the Black Lives Matter has exposed systemic racism and opened the door so that many conversations take place in and out of the workplace. Across the world, everyone of all races and backgrounds have woken up to the inequalities that exist for black people in acknowledging that institutional racism exists, but also that white privilege is real. Millions have taken part in global protests and petitions against racial injustice and systemic racism, while showing collaboration, understanding, compassion, and wanting to learn more about the black experience so that they can help to make a difference as an individual and as part of their organization. One thing has become clear, racism is a moral and human issue. The question I ask is, why is ending racism and the unfair treatment of black people even a debate and a problem in 2020? I cannot comprehend why someone would choose to dislike someone because of the pigment in their skin, a disability they may have, their gender or sexual orientation, religion or social class and so on. 2020 has certainly been an unforgettable year, which started with the UK's Brexit and then COVID-19 hit us, which did not just expose the health vulnerabilities around the world, but it also shone a light on the wider pre-existing inequalities and discrimination. More people from a black, Asian and minority ethnic background and those with disabilities were more likely to die and sadly did. There was a concern that COVID-19 had put diversity and inclusion on the back burner. However, the sad murder of George Floyd in May 2020, who died after a police officer kneeled on his knee for nearly nine minutes, and Breonna Taylor's fatal shooting by police when she was innocently sleeping in her bed back in March 2020, alongside numerous other stories like this, has brought it to the fore again. It set in motion protests against police and their unfair treatment of black people. This is not the first time that the Black Lives Matter protests have taken place, but these were the most well attended and global widespread protests to date. What made them different? The whole world looked on in horror during the global COVID-19 lockdown and more white people stood up as active allies to confirm that these deaths were unnecessary and extremely wrong. Then we ended summer 2020 with the A-level results in the UK, which formed part of a wider picture of inequality in education. It is these same systems of inequality that have meant that certain sections of society are more affected by these. 
In the workplace, systemic racism is usually subtle, harder to point out and off camera. It consists of the microaggressions, i.e. through comments, that make a person feel undervalued, excluded and unwelcomed, and biases that deny opportunities open to white colleagues. The 2020 Parker Review provides first-time analysis of the FTSE 250 boards, which were found to be even less diverse than the FTSE 100. 69% of FTSE 250 companies have no ethnic diversity on their boards. Out of the chief executives running America's top 500 companies, just 1% are black. That is four black employees. And this is according to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission data. This is also the case for most organisations. Recruitment at entry level has improved, to be fair. And the shortage and the problem lies in hiring, retaining and the progression of black people to senior levels. There is no shortage of talent, just the lack of looking in the right places, the lack of recognition and the lack of reward of black talent. Saying your company is committed to diversity and inclusion is not enough. Tweeting about Black Lives Matter and posting a black square is not enough. A one-off donation to a black organisation is not enough. No external facing support for racial justice is enough if you also do not make your own company more inclusive for black workers and other marginalised groups. Transparency is key to instil confidence. Many have expressed doubts about how authentic the external messaging is from companies. While some have pledged to support the Black Lives Matter movement, few have shared how they plan to do so or have owned up to prior incidences which have contradicted their pledge. Retailers and individuals are starting to commit to buying their products from black owned businesses. Some businesses have even signed a three-year commitment pledge to foster representation of black employees at all levels. America could have been $16 trillion richer if not for the inequalities in education, housing, wages, and business investment between black and white Americans over the past 20 years. And this is according to a new report by Citigroup. Race diversity is nearly 20 years behind gender, and this is according to a Spencer Stewart Index report. Gender diversity equates to £150 billion to the UK economy, and race diversity is £24 billion, and this is according to the McGregor Smith Review. It makes financial sense. People are talking about things like race that they were not talking about five years ago when the first Miranda Braun Diversity Leadership Annual Lecture launched and made UK history. This was to help push the race diversity and inclusion conversation forward, followed by action. This is a full circle moment for us right now. The good news is that the majority of top leaders have shared their understanding on how critical these efforts are. Indeed, in my work with organisations and coaching individuals, I have found that many are eager for actionable frameworks and advice to create more inclusive cultures. But again and again, I find one thing plaguing their attempts, and that is fear. These leaders are so terrified about messing up and saying the wrong thing that they are paralysed into inaction. It is critical that leaders do not put this work on the employees of colour, but rather be visible doing this and the work themselves. There is no such thing as sitting on the fence anymore because not doing or not saying something is not acceptable. In my work helping organisations improve the diversity of their teams, I have come across companies that have the best intentions but do not fully understand what is needed to create a truly inclusive culture. One of my recent talks to a global healthcare organisation and an investment bank included over 30 different ideas and action points to increase diversity, equity and inclusion. 
I will share a few now to help to move the needle with everyday inclusion in and out of the workplace. For organisations, I like to start with what I call the triple A method. This is assessment, acknowledge and accountability. First, you have to be honest about your current state of play with your assessment. What is your current situation? And it's important here not just focus on the, the negative, but also the positive. What are the positives that you have done to help with inclusion and diversity? But then focus on what needs to be done. What additional work is required? If you are in denial and think that your organisation has diversity because you have one white woman on the board or you've just hired one or two BAME graduates, then you need to go back to the drawing board and think again. You've got to acknowledge the issue. And if you do not know if there is an issue, ask yourself and check your company website to see who is on your board, who is in your senior management, who is sitting next to you in that important meeting, because that will tell you all you need to know. And more directly, do you have senior black leaders from African and Caribbean backgrounds in the room? Additionally, you can also collect data by conducting a systemic race audit and sign the Parker Reviews Race at Work Charter to publicly de declare your support. Accountability is also key. Everyone, and that includes the organisations and the individuals, have a part to play. Think about how you have played a small role in your silence or disassociation of racial discrimination and do something about it. Number two for organisations is to make inclusion everyone's responsibility. Inclusion initiatives cannot solely be the responsibility of the HR or diversity and inclusion group. It has to be embodied by everyone, including the business, in order to really take hold. To create an inclusive culture, everyone from the top to middle management to entry level employees need to be actively involved. Companies that can implement real change by educating on unacceptable behaviour, conducting effective investigations and enforcing actual consequences for bad behaviour, these are key. Turning a blind eye to one situation is how toxic culture breeds. Those who speak up about injustices and discrimination in the workplace should be supported. Organisations should have sensible sounding policies against bullying, harassment and discrimination in the workplace. But you also need to consider who is monitoring their effectiveness. Is data captured when a BAME staff member reports or leaves an organisation for these reasons? The third action is culture change. We need the perspectives of everyone in order to foster a sense of belonging and inclusion to create company cultures that systemically embrace diverse backgrounds. Organisations need to show that senior and middle managers are building diverse, inclusive teams. And this is not something that will take them away from their real work, but it is instead a fundamental part of their job. This should be as essential as hitting sales targets and bringing on new clients. One way to ensure cognitive diversity is to solicit feedback from the youngest, newest and most junior people at your organisation to see how they are experiencing the environment and culture. Reverse mentoring for senior management and board members is a great way for learning to take place both ways. Empower employee networks with allyship and resource them. They alone cannot change the workplace. Sponsorship and mentoring play a key role in the progression levels. These have helped me during my career, especially when I was making the jump to a senior management position. Diversity and inclusion is not just showing up in presentations or training that happens once or twice a year. It has to be implemented into the DNA of the organisation or brand and overall culture. The work must be done every single day. Number four, we also have to stop referring to black, Asian and minority, ethnic, minority ethnics as one group, i.e. BAME. This is because when organisations quote their BAME statistics, it is mostly referring to Asian people who are in a few senior positions. Caribbean, Pakistani and Bangladeshi people 
are at the lowest hiring and pay levels in the UK. And this needs to be addressed. There has to be room for more than one black person at the table and in senior management positions. Investing in black and diverse talent alongside black businesses are key. Number five, set inclusive hiring and promotion strategies and targets. The core elements of most hiring strategies have not changed and are outdated. So it needs to address the inclusive recruitment and promotion. Recruiters must widen their scope and have a greater understanding of the 21st century available and diverse talent. It is not just about gender diversity. Organisations, CEOs and business leaders need to set targets from and form a strategy that are embedded with their business plans. This works for the 30% club with gender diversity on boards. We need to do the same for race with legislation and implement mandatory race pay gap reporting. In 2020, organisations need to be hiring black leaders on their boards and at managing director or partner levels, other than the chief diversity officer. The talent is out there and it is a poor excuse to say that the talent is not out there and or you cannot find them. In 2018, the Guardian survey found that 43% of its black and minority respondents had been unfairly overlooked for a work promotion within the last five years. It should also be noted that black and diverse employees are going above and beyond their day jobs to work on diversity initiatives. This should be recognised and rewarded as a signal that this type of work is important and not just a nice to have. By showing that you truly care and are making real efforts towards promoting diversity and inclusion, everyone wins. Now on an individual level, it is up to everyone to make sure that this is a movement and not just a moment. First, I would say self-education and knowledge sharing are key. It is a privilege to be learning about racism or sexism or classism and not to experience it. Take responsibility for your own research and educate yourself on the issues and the compounding effects of intersectional identities. I encourage each and every one of you to reflect and be aware of your own unconscious bias and to remove the misconceptions towards a specific group. You cannot just focus on this in the workplace. You have to focus on this within your personal lives. Talk to your family and friends about what you have read and learned. Share the knowledge. Do you have that family member or your friend who tells those racist or sexist jokes? Speak to them and educate them. Tell them that this is wrong and that they must stop. How diverse is your social network? Start by following social media diverse people to seek their opinions on various things, even if you initially disagree. Lean into the uncomfortable. As a leader in today's world, the only way to address these challenges is to be open to experiencing this discomfort in an honest and forthright way. Push yourself to communicate about difficult topics. In addition to standing up for others yourself, you will signal to others that it is safe for them to do that too. It is not enough to say that you are not racist. Being anti-racist means action beyond the I am not racist statement and examine whether your own views, beliefs or voting patterns have justified racial inequality. Number three, give back to your community and the next generation. One action I would recommend is to support organisations in your community like the Miranda Braun Diversity Leadership Foundation by volunteering, mentoring, being a visible and active role model or making a cash donation. Number four, use your voice, which is your most powerful tool to help create real change at a faster pace. My upcoming book is out next year and will include how to use your voice for positive change. Be brave and speak up. A silent ally is useless. Allies should be calling out racism, sexism 
and other forms of unfair treatment when they see it. Otherwise, we are just speaking to the converted. This also includes panel discussions and events for your organisation, industry or community. Do you have black representation on your panel? Does this include gender and other forms of diversity? Or are your panel events filled with predominantly white male speakers? Start there with the conversation and seek out more diverse speakers the next time you are asked to speak. Simply ask, how diverse is the panel? And suggest a diverse speaker to join the discussion. Maybe suggest a black speaker. LinkedIn is a great place to source if your own networks are limited. Number five, my final tip for individuals and organisations is just to get started and be quick. There are no shortcuts or silver bullets for enabling inclusive workplaces, but you need to start somewhere. If you are afraid of making a vocabulary blunder, using the wrong terminology for someone's race, for example, or misgendering people, just ask about their pronouns, how to pronounce their full name by birth properly, or what role race plays in how they experience the workplace. Most often you will find that your employees and colleagues will welcome feeling seen and valued if this is done in a compassionate and respectful way. Do not underestimate one small action and the power of small steps that you can take. One conversation, one online community, one offline community, one investment in a book, one email, one essay, one DM. You can only find value by doing this repeatedly and encouraging others to join you. Together, we will get there. My main message is to take away that we need every single one of you to take action. If you see something, do not turn a blind eye. Say something and then do something. Talk is cheap and actions speak louder. I would like each of you to create a list of five people that you know in and out of the workplace and share with them what you have learned. Then perform at least one of the recommended actions and encourage the five people to do the same. I would like you to do that within the next four weeks during Black History Month and then continue that throughout the year because every day should result in action. Can you imagine the global impact starting right here, which will help to spread across the world? And this is starting today. Diversity, equality, equity, inclusion and belonging come as a package. You cannot have one without the others. What does all this mean? It means that we ask no favour for our race, sex, disability, sexual orientation, faith, religion or social background, just that we are all treated equally and with respect. That is all. Thank you for listening and I hope that you have enjoyed it. It is time to speak up and take action online and offline in our day-to-day -day lives. I will now hand you over to Talia at Hogan Lovells for the panel discussion, but don't forget our hashtag, which is Action Today 2020 on social media. So do share what you've learned today on social media and spread the word. Thank you.